guys, welcome back to my kitchen. I am Jessie and you are watching Tubes Time. I'm so happy you're here. I, If you follow our channel, um, then you know that I am actually expecting our second child. I am currently nine months pregnant and nesting mode has just been crazy around here. And so what that means for you today is that I am going to be meal prepping, freezer meals for when baby arrives, we're gonna be trying to cook about 35 to 40 meals. It's about 20 actual different meals that we're gonna divide into two. So hopefully I can get it all done today. I'm a little bit nervous, but let's get our apron and start cooking. All right, so what meals are we going to be doing today? Well. My family likes a bunch of different stuff. We're gonna be doing some, some breakfast things and some lunch and some dinner recipes. So let me kinda of just go through our list with you. I also will have all of this in the description below for you. Um, my OCD has kicked in and I have a binder of um, all the recipes, any recipes that are my own, I have typed up and they'll be in the description for you. I have a shopping list as well as to-do list, it'll all be there for you. So don't feel intimidated if this is your first time going into freezer meals, we can do this together, I promise. Okay, so today we're going to be doing some breakfast burritos. We actually, I know most people do them with egg. We will be doing bacon, ham, and veggie breakfast burritos. Then we will also be just doing some breakfast bowls. And then uh, something that I think is amazing are these mini cream cheese croissants that we make to go with breakfast. They're perfect for coffee. We'll be making those as well. We're also gonna have some dump and dump and go crock pot meals. These are kind of faster to, to make. We're gonna be making um, a cr two crock pot roast, a Mexican chicken crock pot recipe, a red beans and rice, and a jambalaya recipe. Um, those are Cajun, and if you follow our channel, then you know we're from Louisiana, so you might enjoy those recipes if you enjoy more of the Cajun cooking style. We definitely like things a little bit spicy around here. Um, we're also gonna be doing a dump and go bean and meat chili. I'm gonna be doing a bunch of frozen smoothie packs, um, especially for for, mo for me when baby comes where I can have a little bit of the stuff to help me with lactating and getting my breast milk to come in. So smoothies are great for that. So I'll also be showing y'all me putting those together. We'll be doing some chicken enchiladas as well as some pork enchiladas. And I'm also gonna be doing a baked potato soup. Excited about that one. It's actually a new recipe I've never done. I'll also be doing a sausage and chicken stir fry as well as a shrimp and a sausage stir fry. Some sliced beef and cheese and onion chimichangas. We love those. Some pork, chicken, and sausage jambalaya, like I've already said. Sorry, I repeated that one. Uh, a bean, beef, and cheese burritos. Um, we like those for like lunch and they're super easy and quick. My little boy likes, we like a lot of Mexican, so there are quite a few little Mexican dishes. Um, pesto chicken quesadillas we'll be doing. Um, super excited about those, one of our favorite recipes. And our Santa Fe chicken quesadilla. It's a lot like the tropical smoothie Santa Fe quesadilla you've gotten, if you've ever gotten it there. It's delicious. Okay, so yesterday I actually did a little bit of prep to get ready for today because I knew it was gonna be quite overwhelming making about 40 meals. And I, like I said, I'm a little nervous. So there were some things I tried to do ahead of time. I did go ahead and cook my bacon in the oven. Um, and I have a quick tip here to show you exactly how you can cook a lot of bacon in a faster amount of time in your oven with a little tip on how you twist the, the bacon and you can fit an entire a entire container, 24 ounces of bacon into one baking dish doing that trick right there. Um, I, so I cooked six packs of bacon like that yesterday. My husband actually got up this morning after he milked the cows and he grilled, grilled slash smoked um, two it was about 10 pounds of chicken breast for us, two big packs of chicken breast for a bunch of our recipes. So that will help. Try to get as much of the meat done as I could yesterday. I browned ground meat for chili and tacos. And then 
I dethawed my pesto sauce that I'd already had frozen. You can see a video here that will show you exactly how I make that homemade pesto sauce. It is amazing, especially if you have fresh basil in your garden. Um, then I also dethawed pork that we had given to us. It was a uh, it, it is pork that we're going to use for some of our jambalaya recipe and then also for some pork enchiladas as well so I dethawed that and I also tried to clean up my freezer so a couple tips when you first start out in the morning to go ahead and get your kitchen clean before you start anything so just make sure your dishwasher's been unloaded unload get all your dirty trash bags emptied and get them ready for new trash you just want everything to be as smooth and easy as possible i've also set up some stations in the kitchen as well to make it easier um, just to try and make this flow and be as efficient as possible because like i said this is a lot of meals in a very short amount of time. I'm trying to make it as easy as I can. All right, guys. So once I actually got started in the kitchen, it was about 10 o'clock in the morning. And the first thing I started with was my crock pot recipe that I would have going while I was cooking everything else this day. And that was the hearty baked potato soup recipe from Taste of Home that you can find in the description. You can see here that I just washed and skinned my potatoes and cut them up. And then I cut up my onions and then it called for a little bit of seasonings and some chicken broth and I added that in there. And then it was pretty much just gonna sit there most of the day while I cooked everything else. So I wanted to get that started first thing in the morning. I was a little excited about doing this recipe because it is a new recipe. I don't usually cook a lot of soups in our household and I'm trying to do a little bit more this season and my husband loves them. So <laughs> I'm hoping he really enjoys it. All right, so once everything was in the crock pot for the soup, I was ready to move on to cutting up some more onions and potatoes and getting everything ready for those breakfast burritos. All right, so three onions in and my eyes are killing me, so my defense. <laughs> Seriously guys, I cut up so many onions for this freezer meal prep. I think I ended up cutting about 10 pounds of onions for everything. So I really did need to use something for my eyes. All right guys, so for those breakfast burritos, I started sauteing those onions and a little bit of olive oil. And then I started on my meats, which I wanted to have Jimmy Dean sausage in the breakfast burritos as well as some Black Forest ham. This um, sausage actually took a lot to cook down and I really like our sausage a bit crispy. So this wasn't exactly the best pan to use. I ended up browning it all in that pan and then later on going back and putting it in a cast iron skillet just to make it a little crispier. Here I am cutting up the potatoes for those breakfast burritos and then getting the ham cooked up. That ham is so delicious like that. But all of the prep work that went into making the the stuff that goes in these breakfast burritos took quite a bit of time. So I believe the next big freezer meal prep I do, I will do breakfast foods and breakfast burritos all in just one day and then do the other foods on a different day because this was very time consuming. All right, so once I got everything cooked up, the potatoes and the onions were combined, and then so was all the meats. There's the bacon going in and the ham and the sausage all in two bowls, getting it ready to make the breakfast burritos. Okay, so next up is a super simple recipe that I've kind of adapted to muffin tins. Instead of doing it as a casserole dish, you can do it either way, but it is so delicious. It's called a disappearing cream cheese croissant. You can find the link for the recipe down below. Um, but all it does is use uh, crescent dinner rolls and cream cheese, sugar, cinnamon, and butter. <laughs> all of those ingredients are so good. You pretty much can't go wrong. But here I am mixing in the cream cheese and the sugar. And then I just um, grease up the muffin tins. And you can actually, to speed this process up of mixing the cream cheese with the sugar, is heat that cream cheese up a little bit in the microwave. That makes that go faster. And then here I am putting down the crescent rolls just on the bottom of those muffin tins. And then you just put spoonfuls of that cream cheese and sugar mi mixture into the muffin tins on top of those crescent rolls. 
If you like a lot of cream cheese, add more. If you don't, then you can add less. We pretty much love it. <laughs> and then you just top it off with cutting up little slices of those crescent rolls and putting them on top of the muffin tins. They're a really cute and fun dessert that um, you can eat in the mornings with coffee or just take out for dessert when you have some friends over. They're so delicious and impress everyone. So here I am just mixing up some sugar and cinnamon to sprinkle on the top and then you top it off with also putting butter on top of that. And then they go in the oven and cook for about 25 minutes and that's as simple as it gets. All right, so once those were in the oven, then I started on our stovetop cooking our taco meat that would go in our bean, meat, and cheese burritos that we like to eat for a lot of lunch menu items around here. And you can just see me adding in the seasonings. I use a premixed taco seasoning, and then I also add some Tony's and some extra garlic and onion seasonings in there as well. So while the taco meat started to simmer down and cook on the stove, I started cutting up my sausage that would go in our chicken and shrimp stir fries that I would be making, as well as the jambalaya. All right, so here I'm just searing that sausage on the stove, as well as still cooking down that taco meat. And then I was gonna start my pinto beans while that's still cooking. And so I just use canned pinto beans along with some jalapeno juice and then some salsa I usually add as well as some taco seasoning and then put them in the oven. As you can see here, my cream cheese croissants were finally done. I took them out of the oven and out of the muffin tins and put them on this tin foil to flash freeze. All right, so once I get those in the freezer, I was finished with my taco meat on the stove. I started my jambalaya mix, which as you can see, I just used a box Zatarain's mix that you can pick up at the grocery store. It's super simple. All you do is add water and then your meats, which I added sausage, some of that shredded pork, and then also some of that grilled chicken that my husband grilled that morning. And then you can add some of your own seasonings. That's what I usually do. I like to add in a little bit of Worcestershire sauce as well as some dill seasoning and some garlic powder and just whatever you're filling. I like to make it a little bit spicy. I pretty much add Tony's to everything. All right, so while that jambalaya is cooking on the stovetop, I decided to start on my dump and go crock pot meals. I did two of each of these recipes. I started with my pot roast recipe, which I actually had deer roast on hand, so that's what I used. You can see here, I like to add Lipton onion soup mix to those recipes. I used two packs in each bag. And then I also like to add in the fresh onions as well as any other seasonings. You'll see me add some Worcestershire shower and some soy sauce as well and like I said we usually add Tony's to everything um, and those bag holders I put a link in the description for you of where you can get them they are amazing and make it where you don't have to have a second set of hands holding those bags open for you they are perfect for these dump and go crock pot meals and there I was adding in the gravy I add in one jar of the Heinz gravy to each of those bags and then I also added in some fresh potatoes. You could choose to not add the potatoes until the day of if you didn't want to put them in the freezer, but they do freeze up just fine. They may turn a little brown, but they, they freeze just fine. So once you have finished adding everything to that recipe in those bags, you take them off of the bag holder clips. And then these I actually didn't use Ziplocs for. I used Silamil bags and that was mostly because those roasts were so big that I just wanted to be able to Silamil them up in a bigger bag. So that's what I did for these. So the next uh, dump and go recipe I did was a red beans and rice recipe. And like I said, I doubled it. So there I had my sausage. I did use a combination of different sausages. Um, I used some Kanaku brand, which is a Cajun brand sausage, as well as some deer sausage that we had on hand. And then I put in my bag of dried red beans. You can use canned red beans if you would like, but I really do in the crock pot like using the dried ones. And then I put in my onion powder and my garlic powder as well as the um, chicken bouillon and these I did just use the Ziploc bags for makes it super simple and then this is a quick tip to use a sheet pan to make sure that they freeze flat so here I am just flattening them out 
and then you can remove that pan once they are frozen in the freezer. Next up was my chili recipe and there I have in there a pound of ground meat, browned ground meat in each of those chili bags. Then I like to add beans to my chili. So I used black beans and red kidney beans in the chili. And then some just pre-made chili powder that I got from the grocery store. You're welcome to use a homemade one as well. Next, I added some homemade tomato sauce, one 16 ounce can to each of those bags. And then I added some Rotel tomatoes as well as some tomato sauce from the store. Again, Tony's garlic powder and some onion powder. <laughs> those are like my go-to seasonings. Here I am just taking them off of the bag clips and then flattening, flattening them out on that sheet pan again and labeling them. You could just as well use a permanent marker instead of the pre-made labels. And there you have it. That is probably the fastest six recipes I have ever made. <laughs> They're ready to go in the crock pot at any time. All right, so next up, my jambalaya had finished cooking on the stove and cooled down. So I put it in the sheet pans that um, are the most affordable way to get these. It's gonna be at the dollar store, the Dollar Tree. Um, it's usually a dollar for a two pack. So I put the jambalaya in two of those sheet pans. That'll make two dinners at least, probably more like four meals a piece. We usually will eat it for dinner and then lunch the next day. You can see that I put saran wrap at the bottom and then I wrapped it in tin foil on top of that and then labeled it. That's just to ensure that it gets a, a good seal. Next up, I started cooking this rice aroni long grain wild rice, and that is gonna be for the pesto quesadillas. And I just follow the recipe on the box. If you haven't had this rice before, you should definitely try it. It's one of our favorites. Then I started sauteing some mushrooms and some onions on the stove, and that's gonna be for those stir fries that I'm gonna be making with the chicken and the shrimp. And that is me adding in the chicken for that chicken stir fry and I add sausage to it as well. And that's the sausage that I had seared from earlier. And then that's Dell seasoning and Tony's I added to it. If you haven't tried Dell seasoning, highly suggest that it's really good garlicky flavor. All right, so then my husband helped hold up that cast iron skillet for me while I scooped it into those sheet pans. Once again, that made at least two meals, and usually, like I said, we'll eat it for dinner, and then we can have leftovers the next day, and that is for my family of just me and my husband, and then we have a two-year-old toddler, and we're about to have a newborn. With that being said, however, all of these meals are planned for a family of four. So that's why I said most of the time we can have them for dinner and lunch the next day because they actually do feed a bigger family than what we currently are. All right, so now you can see that I recruited my husband to come in and help me start making these breakfast burritos. He started by adding in the meat mixture, which was that ham, bacon, and sausage, and then also the potato and onion mixture in there, and then we added some cheese. He's really good at making these burritos, and I was able to start making our smoothie packs. There's those burritos and those breakfast bowls. So we came up with three breakfast bowl meals and then we ended up with like 45 breakfast burritos, which I thought was awesome. And we wrapped them in tin foil and then also put them in Ziploc bags. Here I am doing the smoothies. The first smoothie I made was a berry mix smoothie. I call it a triple berry smoothie. It's got blackberries, raspberries, and blueberries in it. Once again, I love those bag holders. They make this so much easier. Now, I also add spinach to all my smoothies. Might make it an odd color, but it, do, it does not add any, any weirdness to the taste, I promise, and it's so good for you. It's a way to add greens into your diet. I also add in Greek yogurt cubes that I froze the night before. Try to get a little bit of protein in the smoothie since I do not usually prefer to use protein powder. I get it from the Greek yogurt. Then I added some walnuts and some flaxseed. And that flaxseed is really good fiber. And then some brewer's yeast powder is also for helping lactating breast milk come in. 
and then I just zip them up and label them and they are ready to go all you got to do is put them in your blender when they are ready and then go ahead and add in any juices or waters that you want to add to it and blend it up and it is ready to go next up was a tropical smoothie mix literally the only difference in that one is that i add in that tropical um, pineapples and mango frozen fruit mixture everything else is the same here Cody is making our um, bean and cheese burritos. And then there is that baked potato soup. As you can see, it was a lot thicker than I had planned. So it ended up being more like a side dish of a baked potato type mashed potato dish. We ended up with four of those. And then we ended up with 47 bean meat and cheese burritos that we will most likely be eating for lunch. Burritos are just such a nice, easy thing to heat up in the oven. And then you can literally just eat it with one hand and not make a big mess with it. So unfortunately guys, I did not get all the meals I wanted to get done on that first day. I worked from 10 a.m. in the morning and then me and Cody finished up that evening around 9 p.m. And I will say I did put myself into having a few contractions and my back started hurting. And so we ended up saying I would finish tomorrow. And my, um, my mom was so nice and volunteered to keep Asher for a few more hours that next day where I could finish everything up. But I am very excited to say that I got around 30 total meals cooked in that time period. And so I was super happy with those results. I got 30 meals and then also 24 smoothies done during that time. So I was pretty impressed with that first day's results. All right, so on the start of that second day, I actually started in the afternoon. I um, dethawed some shrimp, and that's going to be for that shrimp and sausage stir fry. And then I started browning some uh, beef stir fry meat, and that was going to be for my sliced beef chimichangas that I would be making. More onions that I had to cut up. <laughs> There was a lot of sauteing onions this um, entire freezer prep. <laughs> We pretty much could put onions in just about anything. So here I am just putting them with some olive oil and getting them sauteed and then also cooking the shrimp a bit to go ahead and start with that stir fry mix. So for the stir fry, I just add in some mushrooms and started cooking those down as well. I'm also going to add in some of those sauteed onions into my stir fry. I like to keep it pretty simple. You could definitely add some like sugar snap peas. That would make these really good, especially when you go to reheat it if you wanted to. Then I added in that sausage. That's some of the sausage that I had browned and sauteed the day before. And then I just added in the seasoning. I usually go with garlic powder, a little bit of Tony's and blackening seasoning, as well as some Dell's and a little bit of soy sauce. It's a super simple, quick meal to make. We love stir fries, especially with the addition of the sausage in there. It makes it a little bit more filling, and you can just serve it with a side of rice. Here I am just putting that cling wrap on it, and then putting a thing of tin foil on top of that, as well as labeling it, and then it was ready for the freezer. All right, so next up is the enchilada mix. I actually ended up just doing pork enchiladas, and that was some pork that I had already had frozen that someone had given to us. So I just mixed in some enchilada sauce in there and followed that recipe in the link um, and some cheese and then put it in the pans. I wrapped it up in the burritos and put it in those sheet pans and then topped it. Once I got it done in the sheet pans, I topped it with some more enchilada sauce and some cheese. I definitely think that this meal will last us at least at least two dinners <laughs> that's a uh, five of them fit into those pans and those were eight by 12 pans I think we could have got away with doing a little bit smaller pans for these there I am just adding in that enchilada sauce on top 
and then just more cheese. You can't go wrong with cheese, we love it. Um, I would like to start making our own with our cow's milk, so hopefully that'll come in the future. Don't those look so delicious? And then I just topped on the same way with the cling wrap and then also with the tinfoil and labeled them. All right, so next up are these homemade pesto um, quesadillas that we like to make. And there is actually a whole nother YouTube video I've done on making these if you'd like to see that. That's my homemade pesto that I put down on those refrigerated burritos. And then I put that rice aroni that I had cooked the day before, that long grain wild rice along with chicken and then cheese on top. And then I sear them on the stove top with some olive oil. And like I said, you can check out that video there to see a more detailed recipe on this we absolutely love these i can usually only eat about two my husband can eat about three in one sitting but i was able to make quite a bit and they freeze up nicely and just reheat in the oven All right, so next up on the stovetop, I started mixing my stuff for the Santa Fe chicken quesadilla recipe. I usually just add that grilled chicken and then two cans of black beans and two cans of corn. And also some grilled onions are in there and one large container of salsa. You just make a big mix. And then once again, I used those refrigerated burritos that you have to cook, add cheese, and then that mixture, that meat mixture on top of that and then just a little bit more cheese on top to make sure it all sticks. And then you just sear it on the stove top with some oil. These are so good. If you've ever gone to Tropical Smoothie and gotten one of their Santa Fe quesadillas, they are amazing. And this was like our replication of that. There I am just searing them. I had two going at the same time and I was able to freeze up quite a bit. And like I said, my husband can usually eat two or three of these and I may eat one or two in one sitting. Next, there's that sliced beef for these um, beef chimichangas that we like to make. So I just add the beef and then some cheese and some sauteed onions on top of that. And then you fold it up for chimichangas and all chimichanga is, is just a fried burrito. So we just fold them up just like that. And then I made, I think I ended up with about, I ended up with about 12 of these and you just fry them in some oil. So there's quite a bit more oil in there than just when you're searing like the quesadillas. Those chimichangas were the last meal of that second day of freezer meal prep and my totals I was very impressed with in that four hours I was able to get another 14 meals cooked bringing my overall totals over 45 meals. All right guys well that is 45 plus freezer meals that I was able to do in approximately 16 hours. I honestly could not believe it. And that's not counting about over 30 smoothie packs that I made up. It's crazy. And I was 37 weeks pregnant when I did all this meal prep and my little man has made his arrival. And I am happy to say that we have been enjoying every all these meals the entire time he's been here this past week it has saved us loads of time this will definitely not be the last time that we will be doing monthly freezer meal prep in our house we are loving it all the benefits from it have been wonderful especially the breakfast just waking up in the morning and being able to throw breakfast burritos in the oven and then go get ready it is so nice especially with my toddler and now my newborn so if you like this video then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel and please comment with any suggestions you might have god bless you guys